USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till it's over, over there. <laughs> Hi, fellas, this is Ken Carpenter opening a request to Command Performance, Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. As you know, a while back, the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences gave out their annual award. And this year, the man who handed them out had some fudge on the stove and was in a hurry to get home. So he sort of handed them out promiscuously, <laughs> handed them out promiscuously to just any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Well, we couldn't get Tom and Dick, but here's the other boy who got one, Harry Lillis Crosby. <laughs> Carpenter, in the future, I shall thank you to introduce me with less facetious badinage and with a little more of the respect due a delineator of the histrionic arts. Oh, no. <laughs> in other words, our former bosom comradeship has become flat-chested. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Crosby, since you were elevated to stardom, you certainly changed. Are you possibly intimating, Carpenter, that I am conceited? Well... Gee, I think you ought to break away from that mirror once in a while. Why? People will say you're in love. <laughs> Nonsense, Carpenter. I am still the same hail fellow well met as I've always been. And to prove to you that all this notoriety has left me sweet and unspoiled. <laughs> Come here, boy. You may kiss my hand. Oh, no. <laughs> Can't we postpone that to later, sir? Right now, there's some important command performance business to attend to. You bet. What are we cooking up tonight, Ken? Well, a bunch of the fellows who signed themselves the Manhattan Moochers of Upper New Guinea <laughs> have written in and said the thing they missed most was a nightclub. So would we please oblige and dream up that kind of an atmosphere for them? Well, that shouldn't be too tough. We'll get a few ornery waiters. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put a few tables around here and throw a few people under them, <laughs> huh? <laughs> you take care of all those details, Carpenter, but... Uh, what should we call the place? Well, hmm? uh, with you as master of ceremonies, I thought we'd call it the Stork Club. <laughs> Quiet, Carpenter, or I shall have my youngest son, Lindsay, hit you with a very sharp left hand. Oh. <laughs> well, now, isn't there a younger one than Lindsay? You mean Oscar. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. But since he came, he doesn't do anything but sit on the mantel. <laughs> Well, I have it from the grapevine that you spend most of your time sitting up there with him. <laughs> I had to give that up. I got the wrong wheelbase for that size mantle. <laughs> Part of me was sagging into the fireplace, but enough of this, Carpenter. You get an apron, hang off uh, an on-limit sign, and I'll try to woo a few customers, a few suckers for the place with a, a bit of a ditty here. <laughs> What do you know? She smiled at me in my dreams last night. My dreams are getting better all the time. What do you know? She looks at me in a different light. My dreams are getting better all the time. To think that we were strangers a couple nights ago. And though it's a dream, I never dream she'd ever say hello. Oh, maybe tonight I'll hold her tight when the moonbeams shine. My dreams are getting better all the time. Getting better all the time. 
what do you know? She looked at me in a different light. My dreams are getting better all the time. To think that we were strangers a couple of nights ago. And though it's a dream, I never dreamed she'd ever say hello. Maybe tonight I'll hold her tight when the moonbeams shine. My dreams are getting better all the time. Thank you, boys. I guess that ought to bring in the shore patrol for a benzedrine or something. Let's see here now. <laughs> Better put in some spotlights for the floor show right away. Oh, that reminds me. What am I going to do for talent? A man mentioned the word talent means only one man. Well, get him, Jimmy Durante. <laughs> what brings you to the club El Clippo, Jaime? <laughs> Well, I heard it whispered around the social tea tables and a few washrooms <laughs> that you were opening and operating a nightclub. True, Jimmy. So I figures, how can I help Crosby? Being in a concentrative mood, I sat there in a the gin mill talking to a glass of beer. <laughs> talking to a glass of beer? Yes, I figured two heads was better than one. <laughs> Then I had a few more beers and I keep thinking. And then a few more beers and I keep thinking. What did you finally arrive at? The back alley, propelled by the bouncer. <laughs> but Crosby, you need me in this nightclub. I'm one of nightlife's most impressive impresarios. Do tell. Don't butt in, and I will. <laughs> Certainly, you've heard of Billy Rose, Mr. Earl Carroll, and Mr. Trocadero. Yes, uh, are they your contemporaries? You said it, they hold me in the greatest contempt. <laughs> but I'm telling you, Crosby, if you let me handle a talent in this place, I'll have my friends fighting to get in here. And if I know my friends, they'll be fighting after they get in here. <laughs> And I wouldn't be surprised, but Jimmy, I was planning on a little higher class clientele here. I thought we'd cater to the carriage trade. That's silly. A nightclub ain't no place for babies. <laughs> I'll tell you something, Crosby. Yeah. I got a terrific idea for publicity. I'll hire the employers and we'll use nothing but celebrities. Monday and Tuesday, we'll have Dick Haynes. Up, 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 up. Then Wednesday and Thursday, we'll have Peru, Peru, Perry Como. <laughs> I can't pronounce the easy ones. <laughs> then Wednesday and Thursday we'll have Perry Como, and Friday we'll feature Andy Russell. Good, he'll go good with the gray, with the blue plate. Uh, wait a minute, <laughs> my plate is not okay, Bill. Just a minute, when do I sing? Saturday. It'll be the loneliest night in the week. <laughs> Who else have you got lined up? Gypsy Rose Lee. Gypsy Rose Lee. Yes, shall we pause for a moment and wait for our thoughts to come back from the cleaners? Ah, <laughs> uh, just what kind of a job do you plan to give Gypsy? She'll work in the kitchen. After she's been out there for ten minutes, the potatoes will learn how to peel themselves. <laughs> Well, I don't I've know. I've advanced a little since you've uh, known you me. You certainly have. You've built your building. What we need, though, Jimmy, is a little feminine pulchitude out in the front part of the club, you see. You think we could get someone like, say, uh, Lauren Bacall? Would you say that name again? <laughs> Lauren Bacall. It does the same thing to me as a bubble bath. <laughs> But don't worry, Bing, there'll be plenty of feminarity in your show. Plenty of what? Let me hear you pronounce it. <laughs> I gotta go out for a soda. I'll be back. But don't worry, <laughs> Bing, there'll be plenty of femininity now in your working. show. Now you're working. Now you're operating. Hey, my boy. Well, I worked on it for a few minutes. <laughs> I've already arranged to have a chorus of 60 women, mostly girls. A chorus of 60? <laughs> Oh, 
What are you talking about, a chorus of 60? How are you going to get room for 60 dancing in our little place? Very easy. Ten wide and six deep. It'll, it'll be the goddamnest thing you ever see. <laughs> Why, it'll be multitudinous. <laughs> oh, I think the boys will understand that. <laughs> All you have to do is furnish the costumes for the chorus. Oh, that's a lot of costumes, Jimmy. Material is awfully hard to get, you know. But surely with your connections, you could obtain some cheesecloth. <laughs> but, Jimmy, listen, you can't dress girls in nothing but cheesecloth. It's, it's translucent. Okay, then we'll wash it. <laughs> Thing? Thing, you'll be the star of the opening number. I can see the spectacle now. When the curtain goes up... The girls are standing there in their flimsy attire with bright electric bulbs burning behind them. Where am I? You're out front singing, I'm beginning to see the light. <laughs> well, Jimmy, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> you go out and scout up an act or two and send them over. And by the way, see if you can get hold of a cigarette girl, huh? With men who know cigarette girls best, it gets you fractured. Two to one. I'm a little on the lonely, a little on the lonely side. I keep thinking of you only and wishing you were by my side. You know, my dear, when you're not here, there's no one to romance with. So if I'm seen with someone else, it's just someone to dance. Every letter that you send me I read a dozen times or more Any wonder that I love you more and more Oh, how I miss your tender kiss Long to hold you I'm a little on the lonely side After that, what improvements could I install around this firm, huh? Who could that be? Uh, come in. Hello, Bing. Hello, Lawrence. Well, if it isn't the Metropolitan Opera star, Lawrence Melchior. Well, Bing, I bumped into a fellow on the street by the name of Duranta. Oh, Jimmy Duranta. How did you happen to bump into him? I couldn't help it. He's got quite a bumper. <laughs> yes, that boy's horn covers plenty of sidewalk. I must uh, must remember that in case the club ever needs a new canopy. Mm. Uh, Mr. Durant and I had quite a talking, mm -hmm. and he said that you needed some help in your nightclub. Yes, he's my talent scout. Uh, what kind of a job do you want? I have a job open for a first-class waiter. <laughs> Loving, I would love to be a waiter. 
But you know, I also sing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, I sing a little bit, too. I know, Bing, but such a little bit. <laughs> Good day, Lawrence. Mayhap the customers would go for a bit of the better type round delay. Who can say? Would you care to audition one for the customers? Mm? I'd be delighted. I have a number they might like. A little thing called Matinata. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to interpret that, Lawrence. The only Italian I know is what I picked up one day while reading the label off an old can of anchovies. <laughs> well, being Matinata means morning. Oh, I should have known. It's so obvious, isn't it? Well, sing it, Lawrence. Let the curfew fall what it may. I... <laughs> Melchior, that was really thrilling. Bravo, bravissimo, and exequia. <laughs> Why, with a little training, this boy could be another common Lombardo. <laughs> but come to think of it, who wants another common Lombardo? <laughs> well, Jimmy, I want to thank you for sending Lawrence over here. It certainly added a wonderful touch to our floor show. Yes, and now that we've got a singer here, Bing, there's no reason for you to stick around any longer. <laughs> now, just a second, Mr. D. Lawrence does a fine job in the opera department, but who's going to sing the Boogie Woogie? Are you kidding? Yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> now, let's get this straight, fellas. Are you inferring that an opera star like Melchior should try and swing popular songs? If it's good enough for the hit parade, it's good enough for this joint. <laughs> well, I see your point. <laughs> yes, Bing... It hurts me very much to tell you, but all of you crooners are true. As a matter of fact, Bing, I've been grooming Melicure to take your place. <laughs> yeah, huh? <man. laughs> I have been nurturing a viper in my bosom. <laughs> so it's Melicure I have to worry about, huh? Only this morning I sent my kids over to throw a stink bomb in Andy Russell's solarium. <laughs> yeah, it ain't Andy Russell that's going to wreck your career, Bing. It's my protege right here. Why, this man is a panic with the younger generation. He is? Yes, you should see me in my boppy sock. <laughs> <laughs> I'll travel quite a piece to see that. I said... <laughs> uh, how do you account for the sudden popularity of the robust type of singer? It had a beat, Bing. You're all washed up. Yes, you're left holding your... <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, Frankie is true, too. How do, you like, how do you like what that guy Sinatra used to get away with? He'd stick the microphone down his throat, 
get a bilious look on his face and sing. I ain't got no <laughs> With Sinatra, it's obvious he ain't got no body. <laughs> now, with my boy, well, I arrest my case. <laughs> well, I won't be convinced that I should pack my grip and live a cloistered life on Pismo Beach unless I have a little more proof. Fort Whitten with great uh, Facendo. Mr. Melancure, would you... <laughs> I don't know what I'm reading. <laughs> Mr. Melancure, would you oblige with one of the popular jukebox? <laughs> Mr. Melancure. <laughs> it gets worse every time. <laughs> <laughs> Never correct me in public, please. <laughs> Would you oblige me one of the popular jukebox favorites in your most delicate uh, tone? Gladly. You got to fix things. You ain't supposed to be Negative, Say, hey, he kind of got off into another tune there, didn't he? Well, a guy this big is bound to overlap. <laughs> Why, my boy will be the hit of your floor show. And as the piece the resistance, we sing a little duet which uh, will have the customers out in the aisle. And headed for Pismo Beach, no doubt. <laughs> the back of my hand, Ah, you fattest Ah, you fattest red suspenders. <laughs> Let's go to town, Miller. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. We hope you all enjoy a our little show. We're here to crack some jokes and fill you with cheer. The skies will be clear. Take it, no cure. Cause we will make your sorrow all disappear. That's dynamite, dynamite. Me, Jimmy. What is it, Lawrence? Why do you brush your teeth with gunpowder? Why do I brush my teeth with gunpowder? Because I like to shoot off my mouth. <laughs> We got a million of them. A million. <laughs> From Tulsa to St. Louis, we've, we've never, never met a lovely audience than you. Say, Lawrence, you know something? What? I just completed a terrific experiment. I crossed a parrot with a chicken. You crossed a parrot with a chicken? What happened? What happened? Now when it lays an egg, it says, uh, here it is. Where shall I put it? <laughs> I love that kind of carries on. <laughs> to see such homey folks out there makes us proud. You said it. In fact, we never seen a homely a crowd. Say, Lawrence, I understand that over at your house you've got a new bouncing baby. That's right. Is it a boy or a girl? We don't know. It hasn't stopped bouncing yet. <laughs> we ain't got a million out <laughs> I love this boy. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. We hope you all enjoy our deeper show. Who does your laundry? Deeper show. Don't wear Zoom for the Yarko. Deeper show. Just call me Tippet. Deeper show. We've been hearing a lot here in the States about the smooth running way the Air Transport Command carries material and manpower to all the world. One small item in their manifest makes all of us doing shows for the Armed Forces Radio Service very much in their debt. Because the ATC is flying packages for us to the stations to which you are listening, 
And while the packages are not very big, they each hold 55 hours of radio entertainment, or a reasonable facsimile thereof. We'll now roll this particular part of that package up and get her ready for those wings over the world with an item called After a While. Club and a glance at the MP indicates that it's time to say the best of the best from the USA. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. 